Listen, I don't want this video to devolve into a prose measuring contest. Of all the aspects of a piece of fiction, the overall length of the story is perhaps the most important, and also one that maybe doesn't get as much thought as it deserves. We have these different mediums, flash, short stories, novels, novellas, but I don't know that much consideration is given to what the different lengths of these mediums have on the story and on the reader. The kind of story that you tell in Flash is very different from what gets told in a 15 book series, and you need to take that into consideration. Stories don't just get longer, they change in other ways as well. Often these mediums are divided along specific boundaries of word length, but where an individual piece of work falls on that length spectrum will also affect what characteristics it has. The individual word counts themselves don't matter as much as the effect that that word count has on the reader and on the story. It is better perhaps to think of these mediums rather than individual types of stories, but rather points on a spectrum from very short pieces of work to much longer pieces of work. So today, let's talk about these different mediums, the characteristics that define them, and how a story can change as you increase or decrease its length. If you have any thoughts on this video, consider increasing the length of my comment section by leaving a comment down below. Let's begin with the shortest of the short, Flash Fiction. I'll say right out of the gate that I'm lumping a few different categories here under the flash fiction banner. There are other forms that divide flash fiction like the drabble and sudden fiction and the micro saga, but I'm just kind of lumping them all together for the sake of brevity, which is something I think the flash fiction writers will appreciate. I would say that the main emotional thrust of flash fiction is its immediacy. It's different from other mediums in that the setup and establishment have to come very quickly. The reader needs to understand the characters and the conflict in just a few sentences. Introducing and moving through a story in such a short amount of time is incredibly difficult, which, and this might be a controversial opinion, I think makes flash fiction one of the hardest mediums to do well. I'm hoping there's like very intense arguments in the comments about that with the flash fiction people writing really short comments and the novel writing people writing really long comments. Flash fiction stories can be as short as a handful of words. It's harder to define an upper limit on word count for flash fiction, but it's probably somewhere in the 500 to 1500 word range. Some people will put that range lower, some people will extend it a little bit higher. This brings me to the first point that I want to make in this video. At the crossover points between different mediums, a story is going to begin to have features of both types. For instance, short stories, which are ironically longer than flash fiction, are usually considered to start around five to 700 words in length, which means that some people's definition of a short story will overlap with what is also considered flash fiction. The upper limit for what is considered a short story is probably around 15,000 words, though some people cut that off at like 7,500 words and 10,000 words. A short story at the bottom end of this range is going to have more in common with flash fiction than it might have with longer short stories. What makes flash fiction unique is going to bleed well into the length range of what many people consider a short story which means that if you're writing a short story that is of this length, a lot of the principles that go into writing good flash fiction are also going to apply to you. And on a similar but opposing note, if you're writing longer flash fiction, some of the elements that go into writing a good short story are probably also going to apply to you. This same thing happens at the upper end of the length limit for short stories as well. I would say that the defining characteristic of short stories is that they are the longest form of fiction that is generally read in one sitting. The reader putting down a story and then coming back to it has effects on how they read that story. Chapter breaks are a convenient place to stop reading and they will allow you to do things like jump ahead a bit in time or switch character perspectives and make it a little bit more natural because often the reader is coming back at the start of a new reading session where things have changed. 
This brings us to the first medium that I would say is intended to be read across multiple sessions, and that is the novelette. By far the fiction medium with the cutest name. A novelette, again, has different length ranges depending on who you talk to, but is usually under 20,000 words. At this length, you start to have more room to tell a more in-depth story. You have the first opportunities for real character development and more detailed world building. I'll be honest, I don't know that the novelette has a compelling reason to exist, or at least a compelling reason to be separated from a novella. There's something of a historical tradition where a lot of novelettes tended to focus on more humorous or whimsical elements, but that's more to do with style rather than defining them as a specific medium separate from novellas, and it really doesn't do anything to talk about how the length of a novelette affects the type of story you can tell. Which is a good point to segue to novellas. Novellas are the final step before you move into a full-fat novel. Novellas are generally considered to range from 20,000 words up to 60,000 words at the top end, although a lot of sources seem to consider anything above 40,000 words to not be a novella. Defining the top end length for a novella also means defining the bottom end of what you consider to be a novel, which is, in my mind at least, around 50,000 to 60,000 words. That's probably the minimum you can have before you start calling something a novel. But as I said at the start of this video, it's not necessarily the word count that matters, but rather the features that a given length range engenders in a story. The novella is defined by telling a full-length story. The main arc of a novella is often of the same depth and complexity as a story told in a novel. The difference being that novellas generally don't have side plots or secondary arcs. They are more focused on a single character or a single plot. Novellas may actually answer a really interesting question. What is the longest story that you can tell about a single character or plot before you need to start diverting the reader's attention with other subplots? I don't know if there's anything magical about the length of a novella and how that relates to the maximum length of a single plot that can hold a reader's attention over the time it takes to tell that entire plot, but the fact that so many novellas are defined by their focus on a single character or plot, I think gives some interesting evidence that that is in fact true. Now, none of this is set in stone because a longer novella may have space for subplots and multiple character arcs like you would have in a novel, and a shorter novel may only have space to focus on a single plot or character arc and still be long enough to be considered a novel. Again, as you move through the edges of a medium, your work will lose and gain features of the mediums on either side. This video is starting to run a bit long, which is ironic because I want to talk about the longest form of writing, the novel. An upper limit for the length of a novel is harder to define. We've already talked about the lower limit, which I think is probably 50 to 60,000 words, maybe 40,000 words if you want to be really short. Upper limit is a little bit harder to define. There are published novels out there in the 250,000 to 500,000 word range, and there are a few outliers that are over a million words, and also some ridiculously long novels that are like four or five million words. But I would say, just based on what the publishing industry does, that like 100,000 to 120,000 is like the upper limit of what would be defined as a normal novel that wouldn't raise any eyebrows about how long it is. I think the main thing that differentiates a novel from a novella is a greater emphasis on subplots, side characters. You can have multiple character arcs, multiple subplots, rather than being singularly focused like a no lot of novellas are. Now there are certain genres of novels that tend to focus on a single plot or a single character, things like romance and mystery, but you'll notice that those two genres, especially romance, tend to be on the shorter end of what's considered a novel, whereas other genres that more commonly address multiple subplots and multiple character arcs, like high fantasy for instance, tend to be on the longer end of what's considered a novel. 
Again, and I've said this so many times through this video, I'm probably repeating myself, but if the length of your work exists on the margin between these two mediums, it will have characteristics of both types of medium. If your story doesn't fit into a single novel, it can be broken out into a series, either something like a trilogy or the less common quartet or duology or something even longer. What separates a series from a standalone novel is the presence of plot arcs that are not resolved over the course of one book. You often have book-specific plots that get worked out in a single novel, but there's usually an overarching plot that takes multiple books to run through. There's an interconnectedness between the books in a series and the earlier books affect events in the later books and leave events unresolved until you get to later books. This overarching plot can have some effects on the individual novels as well. Since it will take up some amount of page time, you will be squeezed a little bit with the intra-novel elements of the story. You also need to balance making the individual books interesting on their own, even though they may deal with plots that don't get fully resolved. You'll hear people talk about the middle book syndrome, where the middle books of a series or the second book of a trilogy aren't as good because they deal with unresolved plot elements. You don't have the intrigue and curiosity that comes with introducing a plot, nor the satisfaction that comes with resolving it. If this isn't handled well, it can make certain books in the series less interesting than others and harm the overall impact of the series. Another option is you can have a fully episodic series, but I'm not counting that here because a truly episodic series is really just reusing characters and settings across multiple books. If there is no carryover, if there are no arcs that happen across multiple books, and the books can be read in any order, then it doesn't really fit this mold. And while it would be considered a series, I think each individual book in that series is still basically a standalone novel. What's interesting here is that a novel will not develop any of the features of a series until it becomes part of a series that occurs over multiple books. Leaving a plot point unresolved in a single novel is not the same thing as leaving it to be resolved over multiple books. So this is the one case in all the mediums that we've talked about today where being right on the edge, having a novel that is right at the top end of what people consider to be a novel doesn't necessarily give it any of the features that define a novel that's part of a series. I don't know if that idea makes any sense. Maybe I should make another video that explains it better. Anyway, speaking of length, this video has gotten way too long, so I'm gonna end it here. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video and found the advice in it useful. If you wanna see more stuff like this, you can check out all my other writing advice related videos and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.